What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to another Football Manager Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about saving money, making money and all things money within Football Manager. So, uh, basically, I'm going to be covering two elements. I'm going to be talking about how to reduce expenditures and how to make money in FM. Now, on the face of it, it may seem like reducing expenditures is the way to go. It's the obvious way to go. But often, you have to give something to get something a little bit more back. And to be honest, it's probably easier to just kind of up the amount of money you're earning in FM in order to increase, uh, I guess, your, your money, your, what you've got. So, um, let's get straight into this. Let's talk about how to make money. And one of the first tips, particularly if you're in the lower divisions, is to organise pre-season friendly. So, in your first season, here I'm just with Leeds for the benefit of this video, uh, but at the start of the season, you'll often have some games organised uh, in the pre-season. So, as you can see, I've already got these organised, but only one of the games is at home. Home games are, is what's kind of going to make you money. If you're playing at home, you get big ticket receipts, and it's quite easy if you're in the lower divisions. If you can get 10 pre-season friendlies, which sounds like a lot, but if you rotate your squad, play your reserves... Um, if you can get t 10 pre-season friendlies in, you can raise up to a million pounds just through kind of gate receipts if you're at a kind of a team like Sheffield United in League One or, you know, a team with a fairly big standard potential. So the key elements are to play at home against high reputation teams. So although you've got kind of this set up. As you can see, when you first come to the club, if you go to a team, I'm trying to think of an example, if I go to Norwich here and I propose friendly with their senior squad, you can then select a date that's uh, kind of available for both teams. So in this instance, we'll choose uh, the second. And then you can choose all the kind of statuses. So we'll play at home. We'll give you a fee of 70k. And, you know, the board estimate, we can make 120k in revenue. So although... Um, I guess in this instance um, that you'd only be getting uh, 50k. It's a good way to make money. The other thing you can do is if you click on the um, opposition here, it highlights teams that um, that are wanting to play a game uh, and that are potential kind of friendly teams. And then you can see here, you can see what teams are available. So we could make 200,000 pound if we play. Uh, Liverpool at home. I'm not sure if they're going to accept that friendly, but as you can see, we send off a rep proposal. And then if I just go forward a day, um, just going to spam through all this. If I go forward a day, uh, sometimes they'll accept it, sometimes they won't. Uh, so as you can see, Liverpool have accepted friendly proposal. And what this means is that's £200,000 in the bank that we wouldn't have otherwise had. So that's a very easy and basic way to make a lot of money. Uh, moving on, I guess, to looking at the finances themselves, because this is something that in itself is under, I guess, underestimated. So this is your financial homepage. You just get it from clicking on your club and going down to the finances tab. And from here, you can see all the expenditures. You can see where your money's going, what money's coming in. So as you can see here, we've raised £2.8 million in season tickets this year and a total kind of income of almost £4 million just in the kind of very opening pre-season. So as the season goes on, you can check this to see where your money's coming in from and where it's coming out from. Uh, if you're in the Premier League, TV revenue is your main source of income. In the lower divisions, you tend to get a decent influx of money at the start of the year from initial TV revenue and season ticket sales. There'll be two areas where you get a lot of money. Uh, another kind of underestimated thing, which I know a lot of people use, for, but for those of you who don't know about this, if you go to your projected balance thing here it will tell you how much money the club are expecting to make over the course of the season uh, so that's up until uh, June time in England it's also worth kind of noting that this will change a lot particularly at the start of the season it's not until you'll be a few months into the year that you'll start to get a far more accurate picture of what's going on in terms of what money you're going to end up making so it's good to see that we're potentially going to make four million pounds however the reason that it's saying that is because we've only had four million pounds come in and we've only had 30, 000, uh, 33 thousand pound of expenditures uh, so that will change as I've mentioned so moving back on to the whole making money, uh, two very kind of, I guess, key ways of making money is through the transfer window. Um, signing players, selling them on for more is a fantastic way of making money and just selling players in general. So what we have here is um, my starting 11. What I've done is I've just created a tactic that uses my starting 11. And then what I like to do, especially if you're at a team like in the championship, uh, very often you'll have players within the squad um, 
who are who are good enough for the who, well they're not good enough for the starting eleven and although they might be a decent option on the bench potentially their value in terms of their actual monetary value is worth more than the, what they're worth to the team and so it's worth selling them on so it's also always worth kind of outlining your starting eleven and then see if there's any players that you could potentially offload for a decent amount of money and then either bring in a replacement on the cheap or if you've got the squad depth to cover I guess them missing just sell them on. I'll come back onto that in a bit, but I'm going to continue talking a bit more about how to make money. So, uh, another really good tip is to sign high reputation players. Uh, signing high reputation players. Now, it was always kind of associated with FM for a very long time that signing players from Asia and Africa, when you get them prompt saying, oh, you know, this signing is going to uh, upshot sales abroad. Um, it was kind of always associated that that was one of the best ways to make money and kind of increase your revenue streams abroad uh, through sponsorship and selling merchandise. Uh, as it turns out, and through a lot of testing, I've seen a lot of blogs cover this, uh, one of the best ways, in fact, to make money is just to sign any high reputation player. It doesn't matter where they're from. So one really good way of doing this is going to the search players filter tab and then going on national team and then main and this will look at existing uh, national players which can be a good way of getting players in or you can go to international caps uh, and then put for example is at least I don't know 50 and then you can see what players come up so a guy like this guy, he, he's not too bad, sorry. If I was to bring him in, uh, his reputation should be fairly high. Every player has a reputation, I should point this out. You have a player's home reputation, a player's global reputation, and a, there's another reputation. But every player has free reputation values. Like clubs have reputation, players have them. By bringing in the players who have higher reputation, it boosts your club's reputation and as a result sponsorship deals uh, revenue streams and you know people buying merchandise for the club so that's a really good tip as i said one of the best ways to do this is just to buy, bring in international players the reason for this being is that if they're an international player it usually means generally they have a higher reputation and the final real tip that i can give you for helping to increase your revenue streams and get money into the club is to increase attendances now that might sound really silly but at a team such as Leeds you never really fill your stadium um, especially if you're a club who's kind of dropped down the league such as Leeds Sheffield Wednesday Sheffield United uh, they're just a few examples in England I can't think of any of abroad off the top of my head uh, but basically by using teams like this and if you have a stadium that's potentially too big for you uh, you can boost attendances in FM and this can easily increase the attendances by a few thousand but by simply playing attacking passing football you will increase your attendance as much as form has a bearing on it if you're playing well more fans come to the games that sounds quite obvious if you're playing attacking football if you're scoring lots of goals at home and if there's lots of goals at home in general players are just more inclined uh, sorry more fans are more inclined to come and watch the team play and as a result higher attendances more money and ultimately uh, kind of money from players coming uh, from fans sorry coming to watch your games is what makes you the majority of your money through a combination of season ticket sales and then uh, ticket sales on match days. So that's four really important ways, you know, pre-season friendlies, using the transfer market, selling, uh, buying high reputation players and increasing your attendance is four ways that you can make a lot of money for your side and help your finances stay in the black. So just a quick kind of, I guess, reducing expenditures things. These are pretty obvious and probably what people were thinking uh, when I, when they read the title of the video and clicked on this. But a few good ways to, um, I guess, help out with your money problems and kind of save money is to cut the wages. Now, I'm not saying go and sell all your highest earning players, but as I showed you, though, I've selected um, what I believe is my strongest kind of starting 11. Uh, if you're wondering about the tabs here, like ability and potential, you can right click, insert column, and then you can insert whatever you want. Uh, as a tab uh, so if I just insert column here contract and then um, there's a weekly wage wage there we go okay so what this allows me to do is it allows me to look at a players wage in relation to their ability uh, so these abilities are what my assistant manager thinks the players are rated at so don't take this as a hundred percent factual uh, you want to look at your assistant managers uh, judging potential and current ability of players in their staff attributes um, but in this case for example Stephen Warnock is a player who 
is not good enough for the first team. Um, at least in my eyes, Aidan White is a better left back than Stephen Warnock is. And furthermore, Stephen Warnock is 30, whereas um, Aidan White is 20. So I'd rather have the youngster play. Now, this guy's the highest earner at the club at £25,000 a week. If I can cut this guy out of the wages by selling him and save £25,000 a week, that's a big saving across the 52 weeks of a year. In fact, I'm trying to do the maths off the top of my head and you are saving over a million pounds, which it might not sound like a lot cut in £25,000 a week, but as, I, as I've just kind of mentioned, it really does add up. So the other good thing about someone like Stephen Warnock is he's 30. 30 years old is kind of where players' values start to kind of hover and eventually decline. If your player's continuing to improve through his career and kind of up in his reputation by playing well, his value will go up. At the age of 30, it'll start to come on its way down. So for a player like Stephen Warnock, uh, if I could get him off the wage budgets, it'd be really good. So he's worth £2 million there or thereabouts. So what I could do is I could offer him for £2 million. Now, the problem is that a club is unlikely to want to come in for this guy. Um, you know, Stephen Warnock, as you can see, no offers for Warnock. No team considers an offer for him viable. So, very often you might think, right, that's it. I'm not going to try and sell him now. Honestly, take a cut on the transfer fee you want to get in. This guy has three years left on his deal. If I can, say, sell him for £1.2 million, although I'm selling him for £700,000 less than his... Um, wage budget um, in the long run it's going to save me money across the year you know saving a million odd pound a year and a three year deal that's three million pounds saved and considering I've already taken a hit to seven hundred thousand um, pound I guess on his, val uh, on his value in terms of the initial transfer fee it's worth it in the long run uh, oh god I didn't mean to let's just storm out screw it I didn't mean to click that uh, so as you can see no team came in with him again so you know sometimes you just can't offload a player but that's that but that is one way to help out if you're in real financial difficulty and you're really struggling get your players out for as little as you can and although the initial fee might not be great um it's worth it in the long run. Uh, one final thing you can do, and I'm going to be honest, I've never ever had to do this, but it is a way you can save money. You can go to facilities youth level and you can down. we can, should consider downgrading our academy in order to save some money for the club. Um, this doesn't really save that much money, but if, if again, you know, you are in a real kind of financial hardship and in a situation where by you're in the red, you're going to continue to lose money. It's a way to save money and it is an important way. So anyway, that's kind of six useful tips. Just a recap. Pre-season friendlies. Another good thing is cup runs. If you can go on a cup run, get tied uh, at home against a big opposition club, increase in TV revenue. For example, if you go on an FA Cup run with a lower league, League One, League Two side and get a Premier League team and the game's on aired on TV and it's at home, the money that you get from the kind of uh, gate receipts and the TV revenue, it, it, it adds up and it will help you financially. Uh, for the transfer market, buy players in on cheap, sell them on for more. If there's a player on your bench who's worth more in terms of money than he is in terms of his actual ability to the club, see if you can sell him on. Another good thing you can do is bring in young players and then offload them if they don't reach their potential. So potentially you could buy in bulk loads of really young players or just get loads of players in on regen day for kind of £500,000 compensation fee, which is kind of the average for a regen player on the kind of regen day. Uh, and then if you kind of sell them on for a million pounds, you've made some money there. Um, increasing attendances and uh, kind of signing higher reputation players, you know, helping the club uh, get more people coming to games by playing attacking football. And then by signing the higher reputation players, increasing merchandise sales and that kind of thing. And then two kind of tips, I guess, for just saving money. Cut the wages. It seems really obvious, but that is where a lot of your money goes as a club. And then also downgrading your youth facilities if worse comes to worse. But anyway, guys, hopefully this video was of use to you guys. Um, I really wanted to just try out something different with this video. This was a video that I'd considered doing for a while. If you've got any more suggestions for future tips and tricks videos for Football Manager, let me know down in the comments. If you're new around here and you're kind of watching this video as a one-off, uh, feel free to check out the Football Manager Tips and Tricks playlist, which can be found um, on my channel or down in the description. I'll have a link to it. I uh, really highly recommend you check it out. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, Feel free to stop by my channel, uh, subscribe if you like what you see. I kind of do playthroughs and that kind of stuff with the occasional tips and tricks video like this.
But anyway, guys, thank you for watching, as I've already said, for like the bazillionth time. Uh, give the video, video a cheeky like. It helps people find the videos and that kind of stuff, because it appears higher up in searches. And other than that, it's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.